Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group, and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content, process, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise and all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is Information Capture, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Capture and Manage Knowledge domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll explore the fundamentals of information capture as they relate to cold and ERM, imaging, email, fax, ICR, OCR, barcodes and optical mark reading, web content, and mobile content. It's a lot to cover, so here we go. Information capture is getting information from the original source into the information management system. It can include the process of transforming content into a format that can be reliably searched, retrieved, and used. Sources include hard copy, emails, faxes, web content, and information contained on mobile devices. One of the earliest and most venerated forms of capture was called COLD, for Computer Output to Laser Disk. Now mostly referred to as ERM, for Enterprise Report Management, it was and is used to capture, archive, store, and retrieve large volume data such as accounting reports, loan records, inventories, shipping and receiving documents, and customer bills. These systems were typically implemented to replace paper creation in microfiche solutions, and they usually work by capturing data from print streams and storing it for subsequent retrieval through web browsers or a piece of fat client software. Document imaging is another old school with a new twist technique that's used to take hard copy information and digitize it for use in the information management system. Although paper is typically what comes to mind for most people, Microfilm, microfish, blueprints, and other physical content can be and are imaged, either by scanning or photography. This diagram shows a generic process model for a centralized scanning operation. The overall optimization of the end-to-end -end business process should be measured for time efficiency, costs involved, and so forth. Sorting and preparation have to do with sorting the originals into content types. Claims forms versus photos versus policy documents, perhaps in an insurance context, and removing staples and paper clips so the documents can be fed into the scanner quickly and smoothly. Scanning is the physical process of using the scanner hardware to create an image. Image enhancement tools are then typically used to clean up any resulting images that are found to need it. The captured document then needs to be indexed so it can be efficiently found and retrieved. It's then stored into the information management system before releasing it to users or taking the initial steps of an automated process. Now, straightforward as this sounds, and it is, there are a number of critical factors to consider before embarking down this path. Among them, whether documents are being scanned as they enter the organization starting today, or whether past documents will be scanned in bulk the number of locations in which scanning is to take place, the volumes and types of paper documents to be scanned, the number and types of scanning equipment required. For example, large scanners may need to be housed in a soundproof room so as not to bother nearby workers. So there are many moving parts to be thought of before embarking down this path. Here's another big one. Whether you need, want, or should scan in full color, grayscale, or black and white. The temptation may be to scan and store content in the highest resolution and in full color to capture the maximum amounts of information. But the processing load and storage overhead associated with doing this may not be worth the trade-off, especially if that extra resolution and color doesn't add any extra value to the document, as would be the case, for instance, with an insurance policy document versus a photo of an industrial accident scene. More visibly, 
that the nature of the image can change dramatically depending upon the color depth chosen. The example included here shows what can happen to a highlighted area of text in the three modes, and which way you go will depend entirely upon what your business actually requires. Now, if imaging and scanning spring to mind when hearing the word capture, then my guess is that email doesn't. And yet, messages and their attachments together typically represent 70% of what enterprise content management systems store. Now, before you say, yeah, but we can find things just fine using Outlook's search function, keep in mind that Outlook and the many other email engines out there weren't designed to be information repositories. Even Exchange and other back-end systems with additional baked-in capabilities can take fairly serious performance hits if they're asked to perform this function. I mean, imagine the strain associated with the example shown on the screen here, which I'm assured is a real-life example that shows more than 21 million items in the inbox. How efficiently do you suppose a search runs in this particular case? Fax is another information type that often doesn't get the respect it probably deserves. Likely is not, because we think of it as involving archaic dial-up devices that we feed paper into and produce paper out of on the other end. But a lot of fax information is computer-based, and uses the fax format as a transport standard of sorts in much the same way PDF attachments are emailed around. And it sits at the center of a relatively large market, as these figures from Research and Markets show. So fax is not going away, and the information it represents needs to be captured as much as anything else does. Another information type that isn't going away is the form. Like the fax, the form is still in common use, perhaps even more so. But it less often manifests itself on paper than it used to, and so the perception is that its day is done. The truth of the matter, though, is that most business processes are based on forms, even if they look like website or iPad screens rather than the boxed-in pieces of paper we're used to. The function is very much alive and well, and all that information that gets filled in has to be captured if it's going to have any business value at all. Technologically, the news is all good. The software now exists to automatically A, determine whether a document is a form or not, B, determine what kind of form it is, and C, extract the information from the form and populate or update a database with the latest. If we know what the form is before the system gets it, or it's so highly structured as to be readily identifiable according to pre-entered parameters, so much the better. But even wholly unknown and unstructured forms can be dealt with quite readily, thus providing a great leg up on the old manual rekeying processes. This is probably a good time to talk about the major different kinds of recognition software in use today, because they all come into play during forms processing, though their use is far from limited to there. In no particular order, we have Intelligent Character Recognition, ICR, which uses neural recognition techniques to detect shapes. For example, a capital A contains a forward slash, a backward slash, and a horizontal dash, which ICR recognizes as a letter A. ICR is effective on both typed and hand-printed text, but not joined-up handwriting, and can still be effective even when encountering a previously unseen font. Users can also train the system to recognize new patterns, which it then incorporates into its neural network. Optical character recognition is used to recognize text characters, usually by comparing the scanned bitmap of a character against stored character sets, repeating the process until a match is found. After so many years of practice and refinement, OCR typically achieves accuracy of over 98% on typed text, a figure that represents a misread of one character in 50. In a credit card processing application, where the average credit card number is 16 to 18 digits long, this means that two transactions in three will be correctly processed. A number of techniques are used to improve accuracy, including check digit verification, cross-matching of address against zip code, totals balancing and spell checking, and other techniques too numerous to mention. Barcode recognition, sometimes known as BCR, but usually called barcoding, provides a simple and highly accurate technique for capturing information. 
Pre-printed barcodes are often applied to forms which will then be hand-completed and returned, avoiding the need to index such documents when scanned. Barcode labels are often used in applications where documents are indexed prior to scanning, for example if indexing is carried out in-house but the scanning is outsourced. Optical mark recognition, or OMR, is a technique for recognizing predefined shapes in predetermined positions, for example, a tick or a cross in a box. Software verification can be used to detect errors, such as ticking too many boxes, or even to distinguish between a ticked box and one that's been scrubbed out. It can also be used for signature detection, not to recognize the signature, but to check that something has been entered into a box labeled signature. Okay, back to our types of capture. Hardly a day goes by in which we don't pull some kind of information off the web. Whether we're cutting and pasting text into a Word document, or saving a page or image to our computers for use in a presentation later on, or downloading files for editing and emailing, we barely give a thought to what we're doing from an information management perspective. We should, though, because all we're doing is adding to the overall noise that's present in our computing infrastructures. When was the last time you added a metadata tag to something you got from the web? That's what I thought. And I pity the poor information manager that has to follow along behind you and all your colleagues to make sense of the mess. The logical current extension to the scenario I just painted is the one that has all the same characteristics that takes place in our hands and on our laps rather than in our desks. Specifically, the exploding popularity of smartphones pads, tablets, and, net and notebooks is putting us in touch with more content in more places and more formats than ever before. And to be useful and reusable, the most relevant of it all really ought to be captured in one way or another. After texting, email is perhaps the most convenient of the alternatives as it's becoming ever more routine to click the little icon on the screen and send a link to the web page being viewed to whomever you choose. Apps like Documents to Go also facilitate the transfer of living editable documents from the smaller screen to the larger. But the more clever and sophisticated technique may well be the use of the now nearly ubiquitous cell phone camera to take a picture of a physical page or object and send that back to a server somewhere for processing. From that point, the system works the same way it would if you had simply scanned a piece of paper or a photograph. But the capture mechanism and the interface is a lot more intuitive and available than a scanner usually is, and we can expect to see more and more applications arise to take advantage of this capability. This module has explored the fundamentals of information capture, including cold and ERM, imaging, email, fax, ICR, OCR, barcoding and OMR, web content, and mobile content. Having completed it, you may next wish to review the module on indexing strategies. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctored test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.